So we already have a basic patch connected here with pitch controlling the Dixie, uh, gate controlling our dual ADSR, ADSR1 is controlling the VCA, ADSR2 is controlling the filter cutoff. So we're going to start off with velocity. Velocity means that harder notes played on the keyboard will send higher velocity CC levels. So the most common application for that is to increase the volume of notes played. So, you know, when you hit the key harder, you expect to hear uh, a louder note. And so we can do that using the dual ADSR. It has a handy level input, which controls the overall level of the ADSR. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in there. And so now if I play some soft notes, and if I play some hard notes, uh, you can also use that um, level control to control our filter cutoff. So I'll bring down the filter so it's a bit more noticeable. So you can hear this envelope is opening up the filter more as I play harder notes. So you might be wondering what you do if you don't have an envelope generator with a level input like the dual ADSR. Uh, you can still accomplish this by using your VCA. So what I'm going to do is uh, take the output of the second VCA. I'm going to run the output of the first VCA into the input of the second VCA. And so I've got one feeding the other, and now I'm going to use the velocity output to control the amount that the VCA opens, therefore controlling the volume of our notes. So I have a melody here in Ableton with a fair amount of velocity variation, but in addition to that, I'm using Ableton's velocity MIDI effect to add some randomness to the velocity levels of those notes. So I'm going to go ahead and play that melody. So you'll notice there's a bit of clicking going on with these notes. So it's often a good idea when you're sending uh, MIDI to CV to shorten your notes. So just let the gates have a chance to reset, and you might want to ease off a bit on the attack. So you can hear there's quite a wide range of uh, variation in the volume levels from that uh, those random velocities. And so you can kind of control that range by reducing the CV input or increasing the bias level. So let's try using velocity to control uh, the filter cutoff. So first I'm going to just disconnect a few things here. And you'll notice I'm using the trig output to re-trigger the envelope now. So that makes sure that uh, if there are overlapping notes that uh, the, the ADSR restarts. Okay, so now I'm going to plug the velocity into frequency modulation 1. So now let's try connecting the velocity to the filter Q. Okay, next up is mod, which responds to the movement of the modulation wheel on your keyboard. And I'm going to take the mod out and run that into FM1 on the Polaris. So now I can use the mod wheel to control the filter cutoff. Another common use for the mod wheel is to control the amount of LFO modulation that goes to a particular destination, whether it's uh, you know the pitch of your oscillator, filter cutoff. Uh, in order to do that, we take the mod output and run that into the CV input on a VCA, 
I'm going to take the triangle out from this Dixie. I've got a second Dixie here that's operating in LFO range. I'm going to run that into the input on the second VCA, and I'm going to take that VCA output and run that into the frequency modulation input on the first Dixie. And so I can also use that to say control filter cutoff. So the mod wheel is a fun way to introduce a bit, bit of life and movement into your patches, get a, an additional layer of hands-on control. Okay, last we're going to look at the CC output on the micro MIDI. So the CC output sends continuous control message number two, and that is configured to breath control. So if you're thinking, I don't have a breath controller, my keyboard doesn't have breath control input, there's two things you need to know. Uh, number one, you can change that to aftertouch in the MIDI configuration utility. Uh, we're going to be looking at that in a separate video. Number two, Ableton is able to send breath control information, and it's quite easy. Uh, so if I go to a track or a, a MIDI clip in Ableton, all I need to do is click on the E button down here in the bottom left, and that brings up my envelopes. And so under MIDI control, if I click on the list of my various MIDI control options, you can see there's a huge list of CC control uh, options that Ableton is able to send. Right here, close to the top, is number two, which is breath control. So I just select that one, and now I'm able to draw in whatever kind of automation curve I want into my breath control. And now if I hit play, uh, Ableton is going to send not just the melody uh, from that clip, but it's also going to send that uh, breath control information on CC channel 2, the micro MIDI is going to receive that and I can use that to automate my system. So I'm going to first disconnect the, the LFO and put that back into the oscillator there. I'm going to connect the CC output and put that into my filter cutoff here. So that was a pretty steppy bit of automation that I drew in. I just used the pencil tool to quickly draw something in. But what I've done is I've got a separate uh, track of clips that just have different automation shapes. And so I'm able to send these simultaneously with that melody. So you can uh, play around with having different automation uh, drawings from Ableton overlapping with different melodies. And they can be as long or as short as you want. So this is a great way to get some uh, complex but synchronized modulation from Ableton into your system. In our next video, we'll be looking at how to use the clock outputs to connect the Metropolis sequencer. Thanks for watching.